All right, time for some custom fab work. So, I've, as you know, I made this, and no one understood what the hell I was going to do with it. But it's going to sit just like this, like on top of my tombstone. And then I'm going to cut where the pencil marks are, and then probably more. Uh, I just made these little brackets from things I found and shaved off things I didn't need and they're gonna go in between those two notches uh, attached to the back side of the tombstone that's cut I'll like drill hole drill and tap holes in this thing and then just put screws through this the machine screws to hold it on and then just screws through the dash it's a little annoying it's plastic or it's not plastic it's like foam behind this but for like not very deep, so it'll catch, and then same thing on the other side, and then I'll make a cap or something to cover the whole thing, so you can see the screws. Uh, this is for the wide band, obviously, is what I'm installing today to help my Mega Squirt tune better. I'm going to start cutting this thing up a little bit, and I'm going to have to drill a hole in the top of my dash back here to feed the wires through, so that's going to be painful, but hopefully a wide band today, so that'll be fun. So here's my plan so far. I'm going to... Screw this on. Just, uh, I'm obviously gonna put the other tombstone back over this. Cause that's what's gonna sit. This is gonna go about here. I'm just gonna get this mounted up before I, like, hack the shit out of it. Uh, so it'll at least stay together while I get it mounted. Until I get mounted. And then I can cut it apart. Cause it's still 20 year old plastic, it will shatter. And I'll be careful with it. So that's gonna sit in there. And these are the mounting brackets I made up. They were those little brackets I showed earlier. I cut them down, uh, drilled holes in them, thread the holes, got some screws that would thread into those threads, drilled holes, and made some mounts for them. So that's going to go on the top. Behind here, I felt there's actually metal, so I'm just going to use some self tappers, and it'll hold through the metal. It'll just drill right through the little bit of foam on the dash. And this side, there's nothing but foam and plastic. So I got a little piece of wood that I can fish up behind there uh, through the glow box hole. And the screw can go into that and act as a really big nut, uh, sort of, to hold it on there. And then when I'm done to hide the screws, I'm going to make little like plastic caps or something that go over the whole bracket so you don't see any screws. And then I'll probably end up doing something with this other long L bracket, like up here kind of thing for extra support. And then I'll find something to go over the back to make it all nice or whatever. But that's my plan for right now. So, All right, over here, I've removed my air box, and now I'm going to attempt to take out my O2 sensor. This is going to be fun, because they usually suck. I have an O2 sensor socket, or a... Yeah, I guess the socket for it on there. So I'll see how much pain this takes. I think that's a woodpecker, not me. Making that noise. Yeah, I think it is. Put some gloves on before I smash my hands into something sharp here. Yeah, I'm starting to think it's just rounding. Well, the age-old fun I always have with O2, wrench, O2 sensors is that, like, they are 7 eighths, like, because you can put a 7 eighths wrench on there and it fits, but as soon as you use a 7 eighths O2 socket, or like this, it doesn't want to work. It becomes too big, and then it wobbles and skips, and it's annoying. So I always end up just having to fucking take a wrench and use boot strength on it. So, today is going to be no exception. So, here we go. Oh. No shit. Huh. See what I mean? Like, O2 sensor, like, you, that's an actual O2 sensor socket or wrench that I used. Wouldn't work. Take a fucking regular 7 8 wrench. This is a 7 8 inch wrench. Fucking pops out. First try. Wait, what the fuck? I'm just gonna blame AutoZone or Advanced where I got that, sen that uh, sensor wrench because it just sucks. 
I guess it just sucks. This is the second car I've tried that uh, wrench on that socket too on too. I tried using it on the Camaro and it did not work. I ended up using just a 7 inch wrench. You can watch the video exactly how it goes down. Holy, holy, holy should have gotten me one of those. Holy crap. It's what a 26 year old O2 sensor looks like. And it looks like there may actually have been anti seize on that at some point. So now on this side, I want to make my connections. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is take our stock O2 sensor and take the plug end and so there's plenty of room just in case we ever want to reconnect it or something else and I'm gonna cut it I'm gonna cut it you don't believe me? do you know balls mate? you won't mate? Oh, painful and I'm gonna keep this just in case I need it ever again so I'm gonna do it this side Now before I forget, then I'm just going to use a butt connector and grip it on this end. Now that end's done. Now I'm going to take my multi-conductor wire that I ran into the cabin. So I'm going to be attaching my ground right here also. So I'm going to try and make sure I have a connector ring that's big enough to fit over that. This is all I have. Alright, so I just did something that was um, tedious, but I this wasn't big enough to fit over the uh, bolt that goes through the ground to the block that grounds these other two ring terminals. So I took my drill and just drilled out, the, uh, like I bored it out pretty much the hole in it because like this is what the hole should look like stock I guess and I'm gonna hook up this flag to my ground I'm gonna do the little cheater trick where I fold it over to make it a little bit thicker because the ring connector I used is for a big wire for like 14 gauge and this is 22 so that's really dank you see the difference in there I think I'm gonna <laughs> double cheat and fold it three times. What you could, I could have done instead is just solder it, but I don't really feel like bringing all this inside just to solder one thing and setting up all my crap. This is kind of a hack way to do it, and I hate doing it, but unless it doesn't work, I won't feel that bad about it. Like, so you can tell the difference in the the colors what they're supposed to be. Yellow for the 12 to 10 gauge. I'm supposed to be using the red for the 22. But we'll see what happens. I don't think it's going to come out of there. I think that's good. I need to pick a wire for my wideband input. I'm going to go with green. Basically, all I'm going to do is pick a wire, hook it up to here, splice this on and then it's gonna work. But I'm just gonna clean it up and do it real fast. All right, so all cleaned up and nice. This is what it looks like the wire coming in. That hole, the wideband wire is also gonna go through that. The wideband sensor itself. Uh, I got the wire zip tied to that hard line. And then I got my ground here and I ran my O2 sensor back and around so it plugs in. I'm going to plug it in to the stock connection, and then that's all set, and then I'm going to throw in the wideband. So, I pulled the wire out for the wideband like output, just because I can fish it back in, no problem. But I just thought something that was funny is here's the connector that has to go inside the car for the wideband. It goes to like this fatter plug that the wideband itself plugs into. But it looks like, unless you want to drill a hole, this is the only fucking wideband that will fit in there. The connector, just funny enough. And that goes down to the car. There we go. Wires are run for that. Cool. Now that I have the wires kind of routed where I think they're going to end up. Uh, now I'm going to cut this so I can run my wires through it. 
Now, if you've ever dremeled plastic before, you know it makes a mess. So, this is gonna be fun. That stuff smells so good, like, you wouldn't even know. Alright, so since the Dremel just will not fit at that angle in the car with the dash in the way, I'm gonna do this instead. Bad idea, so Alex is gonna. tombstone anyway. But that should be enough space for two cables for this, the one wire for the boost gauge for the light in it, and the one vacuum on. Alright, so it's down to the moment of truth where I'm just going to sink a huge screw into my dash and hope for the best. Grabbed into the wood just like I wanted it to. At least the top half. I think I'm gonna sink an iron screw in there in a second. But that worked according to plan. Skinny nut driver. This is a socket, actually. That's pretty fucking solid. I may not even, I'm gonna do something about the back and I actually think the sides are pretty much good with one screw on each side. So it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I can adjust the height on this side if I want to. So now I'm gonna calibrate the sensor, which is really that because I'm not calibrating this because it's not plugged in. But that's what I have to do. So what you're supposed to do according to the instructions is with the gauge, uh, sensor unplugged, which it is. I'm turn the key to on, see if it boots up, and it's gonna do like it's set calibration. So let's see if it works. I got it all wired, kind of plug and play style, with a bunch of disconnects. So if I ever want to, this is uh, these two right here are the power and dimmer power I tapped off of this blue wire on the ignition switch dimmer I popped out my dimmer control and got the 12 direct side not the out because the outs variable based on what you do you want the full 12 uh, and then this wire going from my engine bay which has the green and black on this side which is the signal is the green and black is ground and it's going to the yellow for the signal, which is the wideband output, and black's just the ground going to the engine for the gauge. Um, this is with the wideband disconnected, so there's nothing hooked up. And 
it's going to give us this E2 error. I'm going to leave it powered up for about 30 seconds. All right, now that's been probably 30 seconds. I'm going to shut the bastard off and hook up our wide band to the big ass plug for it. So now with the O2 sensor plugged in, but out of the exhaust, so it's just fresh air. I'm going to turn on. Now it's going to do its little calibration thing, heater. And there we go. It's all air, no fuel. Calibrated. Here's the wide band installed in the engine bay. A little loop-de-loop -loop connector inside. And we can put my air box back in. Which I don't even really need, I really just need a cone filter. Because I have AIT now over here. Alright, so I'm going to try for no copyright with this stupid rap music going on. But this is the adventure I had from Lowe's. This is just a ground I had to attach so the light will work. Uh, so from Lowe's does not have an eighth inch NTP female eighth inch barb. They only have a male quarter inch NTP to eighth inch barb. So that's fun. So this is all they're not. They only had a quarter inch actually. This is eighth. This is a quarter. So. Follow me on this fun little thing I'm gonna do here. All right, so first I'm gonna take this 90. I'm just gonna throw it like that. All right, so here's all the nonsense I have to do just to get this stupid autometer gauge to give me a fucking vacuum line input. So I had to go eighth inch 90, eighth inch coupler to eighth inch to quarter inch reducer a quarter inch, eighth inch barb. And hopefully this is all gonna fit behind here, which is why I had to like mangle, uh, angle all this shit so it actually sits nice. So let's see if it fits somehow. I'm just gonna hook the vacuum line up for now. This shit can float. Oh yeah, it just fits. It's literally sitting. The fittings are like now against the dash, but that's good because the other time I was trying to get in here, a lot of stuff was trying to go straight back, and I had like five inches of stuff that I was trying to go straight back. But now it'll fit and it'll work, so I'm happy. So I'm gonna put the bolts in the back and make it work, and hook up the wires and stuff.